six, a helping hand with your land. Hey guys, Neil from Messix here. We're out today with two of our Kubota B-Series tractors from two different families. It's really common when we're going through and showing customers our different products um, for there to be a lot of questions about uh, comparative differences between the two. And it's really difficult in Kubota series because there can be a lot of variety uh, of tractors within a lettered series. So you'll see the letter series being things like BX, BLM, uh, but within those series there can be a lot of differences between the products. So today we're going to go through the different tractors that are in the B series and show you some of the differences between them. So starting off here, this is one area that I can clearly tell you there's way more similarities here than what there are features. Um, when we talk through common features between these two tractors, you're going to notice first uh, engine options. So there's an overlap in horsepower. This one right here is a B2601 at 26 horsepower, also offered in 23 horsepower, the B2301. This one here is a B2650 also a 26 horsepower and also having a 33 horsepower variant available as well, a B3350. Um, the 26 being far more popular here, 26 is a real popular engine size because it slips into a different emissions requirement for tier four. You'll sometimes hear guys say these tractors are not tier four compliant, they are but under 26 horsepower, there are different regulatory standards for what is allowed to come out of the tailpipe. And the engines underneath 26 horsepower don't usually need to be fitted with a DPF filter or a dock on the outside of the engine in order to scrub the soot portion out of the exhaust. So these are tier four compliant engines, but they don't have any of the hardware associated with tier four at 26 horsepower and under. Staying on the topic of the engines, while they're both 26 horsepower, they do have different displacements. So the smaller tractor here uses Kubota's D1105 engine, and this one uses a D1305. Those numbers mean something. D tells you that they're both three cylinder engines. 05 on the back side of the model number tells you they're out of the same engine family. Their engines are using the same technologies. But those other two characters, 11, is gonna tell you that this is 1.1 liters, while this is 1.3 liters. So the bigger tractor here actually has a physically larger, higher displacement engine under the hood. And normally we can kind of infer that that's gonna tell you that this engine is gonna have a little bit more torque, even though they're both the same horsepower. When you look at the fenders of these tractors and you start looking at their controls, you're gonna notice that the layouts and the positioning of all the controls is virtually identical. Um, working through what's actually offered here, uh, you'd have two levers for your PTO, one to turn it off and one select which one you're gonna run, a lever to engage and disengage your four-wheel drive, and a lever that moves your three-point hitch or your mower decks up and down. Both of these tractors are equipped with standard loader valves. The valving comes as part of the tractor, not as part of the loader, and they are all located off your hip over here at the side, which is widely considered to be the more comfortable position. The first lever over here, this black handled lever, is your range selector. Uh, competitively, these tractors both have a three range rear end offering a low, medium, high. Kubota is one of the few manufacturers in this size tractor that uses a three speed rear end. Competitively, you'll notice a lot of other companies offering two speed rear ends in this size tractor. I can tell you from experience that the low range in this is a very low, low. So when you wanna say go and wrap a train around a log to yank it out of the woods, that low range gives you a lot of working power and working capacities that you don't get out of a two range transmission. Um, also works really well for gearing for different applications. So the low, the L loader is uh, very good for loader work. It gives you a lot of that low end push that you need to get into a hard pile. The M range, the medium range, is really good for mowing tasks. It's kind of well suited to that giving you some speed but not taking away all of your power in order to pull hills. And the high will give you a road speed in this tractor that allows you to get around really, really quickly, but isn't great for a lot of that implement work. So those three different ranges that are available in this series uh, definitely give you better working ranges for your different implements than what you would get out of a two-speed gearbox. Parts of Kubota's product line have the Lux and Economy configurations of tractors. The B-Series really doesn't. Uh, the open station versions of these tractors have the more deluxe hardware in here on the three-point hitch on the sway bars here on the inside. These are much nicer to adjust than what a turnbuckle is, which is usually the cheaper design that you'll see on this hardware here. Uh, so that's nice. These are a very, very nice upgrade from the standard way this is done. 
The cab model uh, is going to have extendable link ends on the three-point hitch. Uh, those extendable ends will allow these pieces to extend out to make it a little bit easier to connect up to an implement. If you wanted that on the open station model, those arms from the cab model would fit on here if you wanted to get them out of the parts department. But we would see most customers wanting that functionality, um, equipping their tractors with three-point quick hitches. So Land Pride would have a QH10 or a QH15 quick hitch three, four hundred bucks or so that are going to allow you to quick hit your implements. So the need for those extendable link ends on these tractors is diminishing a little bit with the popularity now of those hitches. Uh, but the sway bars back here on the inside, that is a really significant upgrade on the three point and these tractors are all equipped with that. Continuing with our deluxe tractors, we have a deluxe operators platform. So things like armrests on our seats, tilt steering wheels to move up and down uh, to make it a comfortable tractor for an operator to sit on. Uh, rubber floor mats too are something that you don't see on a lot of standard economy configurations. When I point out that these are deluxe, this current family is only really deluxe models. If you go back into some of the used, uh, the older predecessors to these, uh, a B2320, B2620, um, you'll notice that some of the things that are now standard equipment deluxe features were not on those tractors before. And if you go back to generations before that, there were actually economy configurations of this tractor. Uh, one of the cool things that Kubota does is they come out with new iterations of machines is not throw huge price increases at you uh, because now they've included these things and you're now willing to pay more money in order to get them. Um, they do a very good job of giving us new features and improved products but not coming along with massive price increases at the same time. Um, and that happened with these generations of tractors. So what you're getting here today are modern, deluxe, well-equipped tractors at some very similar prices to what you would have seen standard tractors at at the past. One of the biggest differences, maybe a little inconsequential at the same time, uh, between these two tractors are the differences in their dashes. So the bigger B-series tractor uses a digital dash, giving you a little bit more information and also showing you PTO RPMs. If you push the button right up on here, it'll cycle this through to show you the number of RPMs that your PTO is running at. Uh, the small B-series tractor, though, is, uh, doesn't have as much information shown from its analog gauges. So I like to see the analog gauges myself, uh, the ones on the small be our backlit and very modern and nice looking, uh, but not quite as feature rich and as informative as what you can get from a digital display. So while we have two very, very similar tractors in horsepower and features, their size difference does lead them to having a different set of implements. And you're gonna find some pretty significant capacity and working dif differences in those implements. Now, if you've watched the videos before, I'm usually very, very clear that guys often equate horsepower to being some kind of indicator of the amount of work that a tractor is able to do. And while these two engines have the same amount of horsepower, they have different hydraulic systems and larger implements on the bigger tractor. And so the bigger machine is able to outwork the smaller ones. So the loaders, for instance, you'll notice the loader for the bigger B-series tractor having a little bit more capacity. It lifts about 150 pounds or so more weight. Also is usually gonna come through with larger buckets on it so it can move larger loads. Um, the back hose uh, on the B-Series is going to be about six inches to a foot deeper digging capacity than the back hose that would go on the smaller tractor. And it's also going to have higher breakout forces as well because of that heavier hydraulic system that you have on the bigger machines. So don't let horsepower numbers fool you. A bigger tractor and bigger implements always are going to mean at the end of the day the ability to get more work done. Now that said though, those other PTO driven applications, say mowing with a mid-mount mower, you're going to notice pretty similar capabilities between the two machines because of their equal horsepower, but maybe actually giving some small edges to one machine or the other depending on your application. Uh, the smaller B-Series tractor uses what's called a suspended mower deck. The deck itself hangs from the tractor and is not drug across the ground. The wheels that are on that deck are there for anti-scalp purposes to catch the deck and take it up and over low spots. They're not for height control. That type of deck is really good for somebody with really rough ground where you're wanting to kind of skim across the top of everything and not catch every undulation as you go up and down. The bigger B-Series tractor though, because it is a larger machine, it's harder to suspend that mower deck underneath of it. Um, and so these will use a ground contact mower deck. The ground contact decks are a little bit more expensive because they are a larger, heavier deck than the suspended decks are. And some guys do prefer that style when they want to contour the ground very, very closely. So when you lower that deck down, the height control for the deck is not controlled by the tractor, it's controlled by the wheels that are on the deck. 
And once you drop that thing down and start driving forward, the deck is able to independently contour the ground from the tractor, giving you a very contoured cut. The larger B-Series tractor can be equipped with a factory cab that you'll see right here. This is a really nice cab on this small tractor. Kubota is now in their third generation of these small cab machines, and this one has come a long way from the very first iterations of these that came out. It is really comfortable. Uh, nice cab, good fit, radios, air conditioning, and heat all inside of it. It's actually a pretty affordable price from the factory. Cabs add about $5,500 to $6,000 or so, depending on the model that you're looking at. Uh, I really would discourage anybody from buying a new small B-series tractor and adding an aftermarket cab onto it. You're going to spend nearly as much money and the fit and finishing quality of this is vastly better. Um, that said, if you already own one and you're wanting to add a cab onto the tractor, it can be done on any of these machines on the aftermarket side, but there is no match to a good quality factory cab. So that's a quick run through on some of the differences between the B-Series tractors. Uh, this is one area where we very much could sum this up by saying, the small bees are small and the big bees are B. Um, and really a lot of your needs in this are gonna be driven by your acreage that you might have in the different applications and capacities that you're looking for in a tractor. Uh, these are both very popular products for us and well-proven machines in the marketplace with a lot of very, very happy owners. So if we can help you through the buying process on one of these, give us a call at Messix, available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com.